Counter Narrative News wanted to share this really fascinating piece of history of the woman who helped to avenge the martyrdom of Che Guevara. Che Guevara is a preeminent revolutionary against colonialism and for socialism. Uh, he was made famous by his leadership of the Cuban Revolution with Fidel Castro and then went on to play a very significant leading role in the global struggle against imperialism and for socialism. So this is about Monica Ertel, who aven helped to avenge the killing of Che Guevara. Now, M Monica Ertel comes from Germany. Her father was, was Hans Ertel, who, who at the age of 31 was drafted as a war correspondent for the Hitlerite Nazis in Germany. And uh, the family's close other friends uh, was a man called Klaus Barbie, a Gestapo leader known as the Butcher of Lyon, who uh, reveled in torturing political prisoners uh, there. Both Klaus Barbie and Monica Ertel's father, Hans Ertel, become, they seek political refuge in Bolivia after the defeat of the Hitlerite Nazis in the Second World War. Monica Ertel's father becomes the personal cameraman during the Hitlerite period of Field Marshal Erwin Rommel, a leader of the Nazis. And after the defeat of uh, German fascism, he goes to Bolivia and there he settles with um, Monica Ertel and her two sisters arriving in Bolivia in 1952 and they settle down in a, a, a farm when Monica was uh, 16 years old at the time. Obviously, this is a new culture and uh, country for Monica Ertel and her family. And she lives in a large community of former uh, German Nazis. It's, it's well known that a lot of the Nazi leadership and middle ranking people, etc., uh, went to different countries in Latin America in which they continue to play a very reactionary role in assisting the states there in their exploitation and oppression of the workers and peasants and their struggles. Monica Ertel used to go with her father to different uh, filming locations and in the rural areas in Bolivia and she also learned how to handle firearms there and she married a Bolivian German mining engineer which was a, a generally very miserable marriage in which she felt totally squashed and oppressed and um, in 1969, after 11 years of being married to this clearly uh, just abusive, sexist and racist husband, she makes the big radical turn in her life. Obviously, 1969 is, a, is probably the most radical period uh, of any, really, in, in human history, in which the global oppressed are all uniting and forging forward paths of resistance and victories and sacrifice on, on, on a large scale, not least the Vietnamese people, but other people as well. And so anyway, so Monica Ertel divorces her husband, cuts her ties, ties with her uh, upper class kind of uh, peers and community. And she must have seen the lot of the workers and particularly the peasants in Bolivia and how poor they were and how just, how just conceited and arrogant in their, in, in their racist and oppressive views were, were, were her father and the community in which she was. And she must have been influenced by it the class struggle of, of, of particularly the copper copper miners because her husband owned a copper mine and the copper mine wasn't very far away from their residence. So, so she must have seen the great disparity between her own life as a European ostensibly colonial type of woman in this rich house with this right-wing Nazi background and then the oppressed um, in Bolivia. So she then obviously observes the martyrdom of Che Guevara, becomes inspired by Che uh, during his life and, his, and in his martyrdom. On April the 1st, 1971, a Bolivian army officer, Colonel Roberto uh, Quintaia Pereira, ordered the execution of Che Guevara and allegedly cut off his hands and sent them to, for identification. The CIA was obviously involved in assisting in this. And um, this, this particular colonel, Pereira, 
was killed by what becomes the radical socialist guerrilla fighter Monica Ertel, who was who has been dubbed the Avenger of Che Guevara. So after after the U.S. backed Bolivian army, who also got support from former Nazis, killed Che Guevara. Monica Ertel joins the National Liberation Army of Bolivia, the ELN. In 1971, she returns to Hamburg, where Che's killer, Roberto Quinta, uh, Quintaia Pereira, was stationed as the Bolivian consul. And because he was, he, he, he was stationed there because it was feared that he would be target um, in response of Che's death, in which he was personally involved with. But there... Monica Ertel personally, according to all reports, shoots him three times and was able to flee. So she then returns back to Bolivia. But at the scene of the, of the shooting, there's a message found with the words, with the slogan, Victory or Death, which is a well-known slogan by the National Liberation Army. And a former leader of the ELN, the National Liberation Army in Bolivia, Osvaldo Chato Peredo, confirmed in an interview with German director Christian uh, Bodissin in 1988 that Quantaia was a prime target of the ELN guerrilla group because he was responsible uh, in part for Che's martyrdom and for, for the mutilation of Che's body. And he also stated that Monica Ertel, after carrying out the mission in Hamburg, returns to Cuba where she meets with an interesting French uh, personality called Reggie Debray, who's still alive today at 80, 82 years old. Back in the 60s, Reggie Debray wrote some interesting uh, pamphlets about the revolutionary socialist guerrilla struggles in Latin America, which would encourage people to read. But then he becomes more of a mainstream figure uh, as an advisor to the French government in the 90s and quite just a, just a, just a kind of a slightly centre-left or centrist type of political figure nowadays. Anyway... After, after being under covert observation in Bolivia for several days, Monica Ertel and another guerrilla were eventually ambushed and killed themselves by Bolivian security forces on the 12th of May 1973 in Alto in La Paz, La pa La Paz forgive me, uh, where she was reportedly reorganizing the National Liberation Army. And according to Reggie Debray, she was also preparing the abduction of former Gestapo chief Leon Klaus Barbie, who was also a friend of her father's, to bring him to Chile and then consequently to justice in France, where he was wanted as a Nazi uh, war criminal. At the time, um, Klaus Barbie was known to be an advisor of the secret police in Bolivia. Monica Ertel's body was never turned over to her family, and what, what happened to her body remains generally unknown. In a related issue in terms of Che's uh, martyrdom, on the 11th of May 1976, Joaquin Zendeno Anaya, a career officer who was the person in charge of the Bolivian military region of Santa Cruz, where Che Guevara was captured and martyred, was shot dead in broad daylight underneath a subway bridge over the Seine River in, in, in Paris, France. At the, time, at the time of his assassination, Anaya was Bolivia's ambassador to France. In a phone call to Audience, uh, Audience France Press, an unidentified person said that the, quote, international Che Guevara brigades, end of quote, claimed responsibility for the slaying. Really fascinating, just a moment in history that we wanted to share. And, you know, absolute, you know, great salutations to Monica Ertel for joining the guerrilla struggle, conducting the operations she did in loyalty to Che Guevara and the general global anti-colonial militant socialist cause and suffering the final and the ultimate price for her work herself as well. Incredible figure, very interesting. Many thanks.